2025, and after a strange shift in geopolitics and it's 2025, and after a strange shift in geopolitics and world powers, the USA and the UK have found themselves going to war with each other. These long time out. We know in real life that we are too close of allies. Now. For that to happen. Because I questioned that in one of our videos and I said, imagine if the US are building this powerful military so that way one day they could just overtake the UK, which they're all obviously way ahead at the moment military wise. And But when I say overtake, I mean like control the UK and take over the country. And all you guys were like, that would never happen. We're too close of allies. You guys are like our brothers, sisters from across the pond, which was very sweet. Thank you guys. I don't, I'm not a fan of getting blown up. <laughs> once fought side by side in World War II in Afghanistan, have become arch enemies fighting for global dominance. The rest of the world looks on in horror. But who will win? There's one fact that's hard to ignore. One side is larger than the other by a long way, yeah. Yeah. the United States. Based on size alone, the US military is the clear winner. It boasts over 1.4 million personnel wow. compared with a measly 149,000 in the a UK. Measly. That might not guarantee success if the whole US Army consists of untrained airheads and idiots, but it doesn't hurt. Especially when you consider the amount the US spends. The American yeah. military budget is a huge $740 billion wow. compared with the UK's much smaller $49 billion. I think this was an older video because now it's up over a trillion. So this video is probably a couple years old. How cute. Money can't buy you How everything cute. in life, but How it cute. helps to win wars. But to be fair, both countries take their military spending seriously. In terms of GDP, the USA spends 3.4% on the military, and the UK Double. spends around 1.7%. That figure won't help the Brits win a war, but it's something they can nurse their national egos with. So far, things aren't looking good for the Brits. They've been outnumbered and outspent. Mm. Let's see if they can turn things around with their equipment. As they say, it's not all about the size, it's about how you use it. Which country... That's what she said. ...has the best <laughs> weapons, gadgets, and vehicles. <laughs> if we're talking about quantities, the USA gets an easy win here, as you'd expect. They spend far more on the military overall, so of course, they have more stuff. More the tank. UK only has 227 tanks compared to the USA's 8,370. Oh my god. As for armored vehicles, the UK the has 4,673 and the USA has 41,760. Fantastic. Is the UK's lack of resources such a big deal? Experience shows us that yes, yes it is. During the Afghanistan conflict in 2007, the British Army stationed in the south of the country had been finding it increasingly difficult to maintain peace over the last three years because of their lack of equipment. Guess who had to sweep in to save them? The Americans. So I, we had a conversation about this. I don't know if you remember, but we, I mentioned it in one of our videos. And I said, you know, the UK once upon a time was the most powerful military yeah. in the world, recognizable, yeah, and everyone knew it. It was proven. But now, like, we're not even top three, you know, China, Russia, and America, with America being number one superpower, are the top three. And I said the reason most, most likely is because we become such good allies with the US, America. they're relying on America's protection. And so are a lot of countries. And I feel like that's not the way to go. Not saying that ally, you know, that, 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 uh, brotherhood will ever break or anything but you shouldn't need to rely on another country for your country's protection i definitely agree Makes and this no is sense. what sorry to interrupt. this That's is right. why america pumps so much money into the country and i think it's because when many years ago we learned about this when britain tried to colonize america yeah. they don't want anything like that to happen again yeah so they make sure that the country is safe and so carry on yeah no go on and that's why you know how citizens are allowed uh, firearms? It's the amendment within the... Uh, yeah. They, that's why they allowed them to keep the firearms so that way they could overthrow governments yeah. if they feel like it's not... You know, they can never let a government rule them to that degree where they lose all control. And that's why they have the right to bear firearms because the citizens can... It's a citizen's country. Yeah, I agree.
The U.S. Brigadier General Lawrence Nicholson brought in 4,000 Marines with a new approach – go big, go strong, go fast. The new forces weren't exactly successful in maintaining peace, as anyone familiar with the Kandahar Massacre and the Maywan District murders will know, but they were good at going big and going strong, which could give the US an edge in battle. In Afghanistan, the British used a jackal vehicles, which are designed for maneuverability rather than protecting the person inside. The Americans had MRAPs, or mine-resistant, ambush-protected vehicles. Although MRAP tanks are classified as light-armored vehicles, they weigh a massive 14 to 18 tons and are a lot sturdier than the Jackals, designed to withstand the improvised explosive devices that threatened troops during the Iraq and Afghanistan conflicts. They were much more effective at keeping the troops safe from danger than anything the Brits had. However, the US Marines seemed to have plenty of admiration for the Brits and what they achieved despite their lack of equipment. So that's something. One American Marine. See, that's what it is. The, the US just, based on history, the US just respect the UK. They have that mutual respect. And obviously by the UK eventually backing off and allowing, I don't know if I could say the word allowed because America fought for their independence. It wasn't really allowed. You know, they, they fought a brave war, but the UK backed off, should we say, and, you know, respected them enough to for them to do it. But vice versa, I think that res mutual respect is just there where the Americans fought for their rights so much that, and they done so much damage and impact that the UK just respected their power and how far they're willing to go because they're used to just colonizing countries like nothing. And these are, were like, no, and they fought back. And I think it was a mutual respect where they're like, you're strong, think... we're strong, let's be friends. Yeah, kind of and thing. I don't think the UK would ever want to get to war with America. Not either. now, we'll get blown up. Yeah, we'll, we would. We'll literally get blown up and in we're seconds. Not trying to make that but that's the scary part. That's the scary part. I know there's a mad alliance and this I don't see it ever breaking, but that's the scary part. Yeah. The US, if the UK do something bad, which I don't see it happening, nah. the US can just click their fingers and say, yeah, boom. Yeah. The biggest thing I noticed was the vehicles they drive. You guys are friggin' gutsy. I wouldn't get shot at in one of those. Does having more flimsy vehicles make the British the weaker side or just more badass? It depends on which way you look at or it. Stupid. Another difference between the British and US armies is their deployment of women on the front line. We don't want to say women are better or worse in the military than men, because that'd probably start a war in the comments section, <laughs> so we'll let you decide, but it's definitely worth mentioning. In Afghanistan, the US Marines were shocked to see women wandering around shower blocks wrapped in nothing but a towel, Risky. with no cares in the world. The US in does have women in the armed forces, but they aren't always allowed to be on the front line or live in close proximity to their male counterparts. In the UK, on the other hand, women are seen as equals. Revolutionary concept. Despite their surprise. All right, let's talk. What's your thoughts on that? Without causing a mad scene. Woman on the front line doing a madness like that. I mean, if the woman has experience and she's more than capable, then yeah, why not? I think, listen, I'll say it straight. I think women would be better with the, like, intel jobs rather than the physical jobs. Women are smart. Women's got their attributes and so do men. Men are naturally stronger, naturally more physically capable. I'm not saying women aren't at all, but just naturally. But hey, women, you know, women fought for equal rights and if they want to serve, they want to serve. I mean, there are some women out there that are badass. Yeah, there are. And I, I won't take that they away. They are proper badass. But, so... You know, as long, I think that's a, as long as they're not taken away for a man's position in the army, then yeah. But then again, the UK are so small in numbers that they probably want the women to serve because they need, they're desperate to recruit, you know. They're always advertising for army. They're so desperate. I think it all just depends on experience. You can have a, you know a woman sergeant who may have more experience than the male sergeant and she may be more tactical and strategic that's yeah, it rather, strategic, than, the rather than the male so side, i think yeah. it all just depends on experience yeah. in terms of choosing the person for the frontline position yeah well yeah we'll see when if numbers ever come you out, guys or... let us know in the comment yeah, section who, who, what, what do you guys no think? fighting all right <laughs> Surprise at the close working and living relationships between women and men in the British Army, the US Marines soon realized these women were professional soldiers they needed to take seriously. Fair enough. But could the initial shock be a trump card up the sleeves of the British? Anyway, time to get. Could it be a distraction to the male soldiers? The Americans aren't used to having women on the front line, they're seeing women just in towels. Could that be a distraction, a weakness? Because they're not used to being around women, they're used to training. Could that let their guard down? Perform well, worse. Man, the, 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 the real factors that determine the success of the military saying. side. 
who can handle the most alcohol? It's a contentious topic. The British are known for drinking more heavily, and they can start at a younger age, but the US soldiers might give them a run for their money. <laughs> Around 40% of US soldiers indulge in binge drinking. I know what you're thinking. What does this have to do with the power of their militaries? Although drinking is a skill that might be impressive on a wild night out on the town, it's not a positive thing during combat. It's important for soldiers to keep their mental health stable over extended periods of combat. Yeah. The soldiers might use alcohol as a way of coping with difficult experiences they encounter during the military instead of talking about them. Over half of British servicemen and women drank at a level that could harm their health in 2018, most likely to self-medicate from mental health conditions such as PTSD or mm. post-traumatic stress disorder. Similarly, alcohol as a coping mechanism is a huge problem among veterans. Wow, things just got dark. Back to a more lighthearted topic. You can't mention the drinking preferences of the British without mentioning their ultimate beverage of choice, tea. In contrast, tea. the US prefers coffee. Does this affect the combat performance of either side? Time to find out. Many British tanks and armored vehicles are fitted with water boiling devices. Cube-shaped kettles enable the troops to boil water inside the protection of a tank and drink tea to their heart's content. Wow. Maybe that's why the British were willing to sacrifice the sturdiness of their vehicles in Afghanistan. <laughs> this might seem Tea's a bit eccentric. You know what, yeah? I know they say Brits like tea, but from my experience, I see so many... Because I work in a lot... I worked in a lot of... Um, office environments, you know, uh, commercial environments. Every job I had is just coffee. Out of every 40 people, one person will have a tea. I feel like it's the older generation... That wants coffee. ...that love tea. You think? Mom, like, yeah, I guess my mum likes tea, but my she... My mum loves tea. But she prefers coffee. And my neighbours, opposite their elderly, they love tea as well. Is it? Yeah. Maybe. I Maybe think the previous generation, they love tea. Pour me a cup of love. Pour you a cup of... <laughs> Not to mention pointless, but hear us out. During World War II, a large number of fatalities were caused by crew members having to leave the safety of their tanks when they needed a break. There was only one reasonable solution. Let them make a brew inside the tank. That way, the troops were less of a target for enemy fire. 10 out of 10 for ingenuity. Who knows, maybe this could be their secret weapon in a future war. There's <laughs> nothing like a fresh brew to keep an army going. But don't discount the Americans, because they also seem to recognize the importance of a lovely warm beverage. The US Army aims to ensure coffee is always available to its soldiers, whether in ration packs or at garrisons. Sometimes there are shortages, so improvisation comes into play to give the soldiers their daily fix. During the Korean War, some soldiers indulged in sock coffee, coffee sock. filtered using a sock. Or, if the worst Whoa. comes to worst, they just mix instant coffee granules with cold water and down it like a shot of vodka. Lovely. Damn. It's worth it to have that caffeine coursing through your veins ready for battle. Clearly, both sides have their vices, but we'll have to give the <laughs> Brits the edge on this one, based purely on the fact that they're less likely to drop dead from swallowing some questionable feet fungi. In this capitalist <laughs> world, soldiers aren't just fighting for their national pride or a noble cause. They also want to receive their paycheck at the end of it all. The draft ended in 1973 after the Vietnam War in the USA, making the Army a professional, career-oriented force. In the British Army, the National Service officially ended in 1960, and it transformed into a professional army in 1963. Mm -hmm. So who gets the fattest check? New recruits in the British Army start on a salary of £15,985 a year in training, soon going up to £20,400 when becoming a private. After a few years, if they can reach the rank of sergeant, the salary will go up to £35,853 a year. That's around 46000 bucks. In the U.S. Army, oh, new wow. recruits can expect to earn $24,512 a year as a private first class after initial training. A sergeant earns anything up to $29,610 a year. I didn't realize the uh, U.K. pay was so much higher, but I feel like, you know what I think it is? I think... Like you mentioned in the previous video, uh, U.S. citizens, they're, more, they're very proud and, you know, they want to serve. It's not about the money. Obviously, they need the money to live, but it's not about the money. But I feel like in the U.K., we don't have many patriotic British people like the U.S. at the moment. And for that reason, they probably pump up the salary to attract more people because who's going to risk their life for the country that, when it's not that patriotic? In my opinion, that's not enough. It's not enough for either. No, it's not for either. You're I agree. putting your life on the line for your country, for your people. Yeah. You can die from this. This is not enough money. I agree with that. You got girls doing OnlyFans that make so much more money than this. I know Only. it's completely different, but do you it's guys a, get what I'm trying mix. to say? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is actually a violation. Yeah, but that's how it is. <laughs> they need a massive pay rise. I agree. Yeah. So we have a clear winner here. 
Let's hope the Americans don't find out or they could end up switching sides. Now that would be an interesting Join the war. Brits. With so much money, you'd hope the British soldiers would go through a half-decent training program. Let's find out if that's the case. In the UK, most soldiers complete a 14-week common military syllabus, followed by specialist training for different trades and divisions. US soldiers train for slightly less time. They complete a 10-week basic combat training course, then complete more career-oriented training. Overall, both countries offer a similar style of training based on fitness, discipline, and weaponry. It's hard to say that one country is definitively superior here, but there is one key difference – the age of the recruits. A US soldier must be 17 to join the forces with parental consent or 18 without the consent. Meanwhile, Brits can join at the age of 16 if they have parental consent, making the UK the only NATO country to recruit young people into its military at wow. age 16. It's a controversial policy, considering these recruits must remain in the army until they're 22, and they can't even vote or drink alcohol until they turn 18. With literal boys among them who might have joined the forces as a rash decision, could British soldiers be flakier and less mature than their US counterparts? Or is their youth just a testament to how tough they are? But this is just the beginning. Average soldiers might make up the bulk of the army, but what about the guys that are really, really well trained? We're talking about elite special forces. The British Army has the famous SAS, or Special Air Service. Founded during World War II, it's one of the oldest special forces and has the highest entry requirement of all British forces, with the motto, Who Dares Wins. The SAS is respected and feared across the globe in equal measure. It's heavily involved in reconnaissance and counterterrorism, meaning most of their work is below the radar and people like us can't get too nosy about it. However, they do plenty of cool and hardcore stuff like rescuing hostages. Not to be outdone, the US Army has the highly respected and admired Delta Force, also known as the 1st Special Forces Operation Detachment. We've heard about the Delta Force. You guys have spammed the comment section about us reacting to the Delta Force because we've done the uh, SEAL Team 6. SEAL Team. SEAL Team. So Delta Force, I know, is meant to be even higher than that. So we're going to do some reactions soon. Subscribe for those reactions. Formed in 1977, it's known as one of the most secretive U.S. forces and specializes in counterterrorism and hostage rescue. Sounding familiar yet? Allegedly, the Delta Force was modeled on the British SAS. We want to give the Brits the point here for sheer originality, but it's not exactly good news for them if the Americans know the training secrets and operations of their elite forces. Sure. That's a rookie error if there ever was one, especially when there are way more U.S. soldiers and they have better equipment. What about the heads of the armies? The US Army serves the government of the USA, making the President of the US Commander-in-Chief. Meanwhile, the British Army serves Her Majesty the Queen as head of the armed forces, who is also their Commander-in-Chief. Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth is closely tied to the British military, having been a wife, mother, and even grandmother of individuals serving in the armed forces. During World War II, the Queen, who was then Princess Elizabeth, joined the Auxiliary Territorial Service herself and learned to maintain and drive military vehicles and ambulances. She even achieved the rank of Honorary Junior Commander while doing her part for the war effort. By comparison, the current US president, as of this script's writing, claimed to suffer bone spurs when it was his time to serve his country. Points here for the badass monarch up to her elbow <laughs> in Greece, fixing combat vehicles and serving her country. Overall, the British and American armies are matched fairly evenly in terms of their training and structure. It doesn't exactly come as a surprise, considering their histories are so closely linked. Realistically, the Americans would likely have the upper hand in any war against the Brits due to sheer manpower and weaponry. But let's hope the two sides can settle their differences over a cup of tea. So, what did you think of the US-UK military compar comparison? Listen, we ain't trying to start no war, yeah? I'm saying on behalf of the UK, we're just here on peace, all right? Peace be upon us. We just want to live life, make videos, take care of our two little kitties. Peace be upon us. Yeah? <laughs> Simple. No, 100%. And it's no secret. Obviously, this video, I think, was a little bit old, but... Even then, let alone now, the US only keep pumping more and more and more money. It's up to a trillion now, over a trillion even. UK's... Which is that here? We know about the Black Star. We know we've reacted to all the future technology and uh, the future, you know, planes that's coming. And yeah, we ain't got nothing like that. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for the recommendation. Don't forget to like and subscribe. For now, peace out. Bye.